Welcome to Retro Ramblings. If you want to do a bit of retro game coding but don't have a spare year to write an assembly language, I might have a few tricks that could help you. Check it out. Okay, so uh, what's going on here? Well, we've got a Commodore 64 game. It's written in BASIC. Normally, when you talk about BASIC games, you think there's no way uh, the performance is going to be any good because the BASIC compiler is incredibly slow in the old Commodore 64. However, with uh, the use of compilers, you can actually get half-decent performance out of a BASIC game. And that's the, the basic premise of, of what I'm doing. So, this is a game that's based on the old Space Invaders classic, I call it Petsky Raiders. Petsky is the the graphic characters used. So for simplicity this game just uses those basic Petsky characters, doesn't use any of the enhanced features uh, of the Commodore 64 like your uh, your sprites and your, your character graphics. But I've got something else which uh, uh, I showed right at the beginning which uses those functionalities but is also totally in basic again compiled. So let's have a look at what we've got. Oh, and I'm actually using the Vice uh, emulator. I think that's an important little piece of information if you're not uh, if you're new to all of this. And the CBM PRG Studio, which is uh, great for developing this. Even though I actually coded this on the correct Commodore 64 hardware, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But just to uh, show you what's going on, what I'll do, I'll just rerun the program where I've placed a stop at a point where I can go and print a few string variables and maybe that looks familiar. That's one of my little aliens and or raiders I should say because it's Petsky Raiders. It's, uh, oop. Now he looks similar to this one but he's the other side of the animation so uh, what happens is this gets rendered then this one then back and forth and these are done with simple print statements very basic, literally, and excuse the pun. So let's have a look at a few more of my aliens. Uh, let's look at B1. No, so let's try A2. Oh, if I can write string properly. Print A3. So these are the uh, the three level, the three aliens uh, on the on the three different levels that uh, are rendered when the game plays. And as you can see these are just simple ASCII characters that you can bring up simply by uh, the right key combinations on the Commodore 64 keyboard. And because this game used a lot of Petsky characters I used the uh, correct hardware. Uh, the emulator makes it a bit clumsy to to get these characters out so that's why I used the Commodore 64. Also, uh, just to make life so much easier when programming on the Commodore 64 hardware, I've got a, uh, a cartridge, I think it's what's called Ultimate uh, 3 Plus, I think it is. It allows you to scroll up and down, it allows you to find uh, uh, commands in BASIC, um, so lots of uh, features there that make coding on the original hardware so much more uh, user friendly. So um, I wouldn't even try coding this as much as I like the nostalgia of uh, coding on the original hardware. Without that cartridge, yeah, it's, it would just be too clumsy and painful. But that's that's uh, certainly makes it a lot easier. And that's the way I did it. All right, so let's go and have a let's run this again. I'll hit continue, and we'll just go into the game. Now we're in basic. We haven't compiled it. So it's painfully slow. I've also turned off uh, some of the soundtrack. So we've got our uh, aliens moving along the screen using basic print commands. Super simple. The bombs they're dropping and the our little spaceship, they are using uh, uh, rendered using the poke command. So it's a combination of printing and poking uh, the graphics onto the screen. Now you may also notice I've used some smoother, relatively, a, a smoother animation for the spaceship and the bombs. So the actual aliens, they're moving across one character at a time, but our spaceship is actually moving across half a character. It's not a very graphically 
exciting spaceship um, but what you can do using the characters available in Petsky is draw this spaceship in half um, going moving across half a character at a time so the next one would have the uh, the left hand turret if you like on the other side of that same character if that makes any sense and the uh, the code which I'll make available has all the characters you need to uh, to do that so you can work that out from the code same with these uh, these bombs as you can see the the bomb is in the top right hand sorry top left hand corner of the character and you know, so is this one <laughs> I was hoping I was going to see one with the, uh, the in on the bottom uh, left hand corner so that's what it does it goes from the top corner to the bottom corner then it moves down one character space and goes top corner bottom corner and continues down that's how I'm getting comparatively smooth graphics as opposed to moving one character at a time okay so that's the basic functionality of the game let's have a look at the, the code I'm not going to go through the whole thing and bore you to tears I'm sure uh, if there's interest I might go into the code in a bit more detail but the main thing I'll have a look at is the the main loop that goes through and uh, does all the magic so we've just got uh, X and Y values which are just the X and Y position of the starting point of our aliens we go down the screen Y, y equals Y plus 1 that moves us down um, this isn't run every time this cycles but I'll, we'll go into that and the X value moves across and back across and back as you can see the aliens move okay we're drawing the very top line where we've got the score and the high score and then we uh, how many ships we've got left and the animation uh, cycles one two one two um, to present the two different versions of each of the the aliens to give them their animation so um, we also increase x1 which then once it's greater than 13 it goes x equals 26 minus x1 what that does is it moves across and then once we get um, to 13 or greater than 13 and then decreases again back to zero so x goes increases and then decreases up to 13 so let's have a look at how we actually uh, draw those uh, aliens on the screen we start off with a home which takes us to the top left hand corner of the screen and we go uh, in this string using the down character 10 times and then we just take the left and we cut that string down based on the value of y so what we're getting is that with as y increases we will get increasing amounts of this down character drawn which moves the aliens down the screen very simple stuff if um, okay this is just there to clear out the um, re remaining um, image of the aliens whenever it moves down a level now this is where we cycle through each row as the main loop cycles through it only progresses the movement of the aliens uh, one level at a time so for the first level the first row if you like the top row and the middle row and the lower row on the first row what we do is we again print um, the left string which is all of these spaces and and we cut that using the left string by the x value so as you progress x across uh, it will move it uh, across to the right and the L1 string is the actual string of the alien and uh, that gets changed as you shoot them and they blow up and so these L values uh, adjust as that happens but we won't go over that that's that's getting a bit deep for this particular video and then we um, cycle through and the next time we go through the main loop we it'll jump from the level from, doesn't go to 250 goes to 260 and 260 will be the, the next level and so on so every three cycles you'll get a full uh, display of all the aliens so as we go down further we get into other functionality which um, uh, gets a bit more tricky but what we're doing here is we uh, once a a, uh, a radar explodes the explosion remains on the screen for a little while and then disappears so this just processes that and this is um, 
modifying these L1, L2, L, sorry, in this case really just L3 because it's it's only L3 where the uh, the alien ship will explode. And this go subroutine just takes us to the section of the code where we're we're dropping bombs. FS stands for when the uh, uh, ship is blown up. If it's not blown up, it just takes us to the uh, 300. That a lot of this code is, I think, would generally be considered as poorly written, but it's written in such a way to be very efficient when it's compiled. So all the if statements, as you can see, they're just if it's one, if it's two. I'm not using greater than signs. I'm not using less than signs. And I'll go a bit deeper into what I'm doing as far as compiling the code and making it efficient for that. Uh, possibly in another video. I just want to cover the basics in this one. Um, but just up the top here, these are all the variables that are defined in bytes, integers and strings and that's for the compiler so it knows um, how to process the values in all these variables in the most efficient way possible and that's something I'm using a lot. And I'll just I'll come up uh, and I'll show you an example of that just in a moment. So if uh, if the uh, ship isn't exploded, we go to 300. Now we're getting the keyboard and joystick values. Now, if we this is moving left and moving right, so this variable is set based on left or right motion, depending on keyboard or joystick. Either way, using the SD value rather than going um, SD being ship direction. If rather than going minus one or one to indicate left or right, I've gone one and two because the compiler likes to use um, variables, uh, the, the most efficient one being a byte is 0 to 255 so using negative numbers gets messy so that's why I use 1 and 2 to indicate left or right. And we also have the fire button here as well and um, yeah I won't go into too much detail there but basically uh, once the SD is set which is the ship's direction uh, if there's no change in direction, i.e. the ship's not moving, it will we'll jump down here, otherwise we go to another section of the code where we process the, the move and this is move. And this is where we also look at the uh, um, half character move, move left and right. Okay, uh, we also have some backing sounds on level 1, only on level 1 we progress the, uh, the backing sound, which is a bit jerky and something I still want to improve, but that's uh, a lot easier in assembly, but you know we're trying to be efficient here, and um, it's not ideal, but we can still have a backing track if we're uh, careful with uh, with basic. And okay, this is if we've exceeded the lowest point that the aliens progress, then we uh, uh, will it'll actually cause the ship to explode, and then the raiders go back up to uh, a Y value of six. So. Um, this is there to. Um, this is what happens when you've allowed the aliens to get too low on the screen, and you lose you lose one of your ships. Otherwise, if you haven't got to that lowest level point, it'll just go to 160, which is back up here, and around we go basically. So that's the the main part of the code. Let me know if you think this is uh, of any interest, and I'll uh, dig into it deeper. I do want to come out with another video um, based on the. Uh, he, before the introduction I had a quick look at what I'm working on now which is uh, a, a far more advanced game, far more advanced graphics but still using the same approach and I'll hopefully have a video on that soon. So let me know if you've got any questions, just post them below and as usual subscribe, like, all that. Thank you very much.